can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I will do Is forever Forever worship you only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Please pray with me. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for being here with us today. We pray that you would bless us as we pause to remember and as we reflect upon Marcia's life, we pray that we might see you in that reflection. Lord, we pray that you might strengthen our hearts and strengthen our faith. And Lord, that we might follow you more closely as we consider the way that Marcia followed you. Bless our time together, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and thank you for coming to celebrate the life of Marcia Schindler. 
who passed into the, to the presence of her Lord on April 28, 2020. As Marcia honored her Lord throughout her life, she would also want us to honor her Lord today. Marcia Schindler left this earth on April 28, 2020 to receive her eternal reward and is now in the presence of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and a host of family and friends. She was a member of West Missionary Church of Bern. Marcia graduated from South Adams High School, Huntington University, Indiana University, Fort Wayne, and Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Marcia worked at the Bern Tri-Weekly News, North American Van Lines, as a network analyst, Waterford, Waterfield Financial as a manager, business analyst, Brilliant LLC, writing and creating online courses, and at Lincoln Financial Group as a senior IT audit consultant. Marcia loved music. She enjoyed contemporary Christian choruses and songs, but she loved the old hymns, playing the piano, singing solos and in trios, ensembles, choirs, and especially duets with her dear cousin, Greg Luganville. Playing games, which her nephew Jonathan, with her nephew Jonathan, often introduced at Christmas gatherings, shopping, writing, and most of all, visiting family and friends. She loved the competition of the games and was raised to play to win, but play fair and be a good loser. She loved creating the Dutch Blitz tournament with her nieces and nephews and designing the traveling crown. She enjoyed creating and selling crafts with her mom and sister. Marcia was also a woman of passion and fairness. She was passionate about the physically disabled and less fortunate and was also a woman of principle. She was friendly and kind, but she is also known to be bold and was not shy or afraid to speak up. She would fight for what is right and wanted to do her part to make life better for all. Her greatest joys were helping and teaching others, being welcoming and writing and creating documentation. Surviving is her loving family, beloved sister, Joanne Schindler, nieces, Valerie and husband, Mark Brito, Stephanie and husband, Nathan Gleaves, Jennifer Schindler, nephew, Jonathan and wife, Abby Schindler, great nieces and nephews, Sophie, Lily, Emmy, and Isaac Brito, and Thomas, Eleanor, and Samuel Schindler. She is also survived by many dear extended family and close friends. She has been reunited with her beloved parents, Max and Ellie, and her beloved brother and sister-in-law, Thomas and Linda, in heaven. Marcia's family uh, deeply appreciates your presence here today and your prayers and your support. And also all of the love that you expressed to Marcia throughout her life. We have our memories of, of Marcia that we treasure in our hearts. Later in this service, you will have an opportunity to briefly share your memories of Marcia. So we encourage you to begin to think about what you would like to share. Marcia will be remembered for many things, but most importantly, she will be remembered for her faith. She had a close personal relationship with Christ that guided her throughout her life. Because of her faith relationship with Jesus, she, is, was, she was confident that all was well between herself and her God. Fittingly, her favorite song was, It is well with my soul. Would you stand with me if you are able as we sing this in honor of our dear friend and family member, Marsha. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well. So 
Amazing grace, my chains are gone. <clears throat> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found was blind but now I see twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy Unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and pour. As long as life endures, my chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. Amazing grace The earth 
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be forever mine. You are forever mine. At a time when we share memories, it's always good to know that the memories that are shared are good and fond memories. And we certainly have a life well lived, and we have someone that we can honestly say very good things about and really lift up. And uh, in doing so, we also honor her Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to begin this time with uh, a couple individuals are going to come and, and share from the pulpit. And then after that, uh, we're going to give you the opportunity, and we'll have a couple gentlemen with uh, microphones coming to assist you so that you can be heard and so that we also um, get uh, your tribute uh, on our recordings. So at this time, Jen, would you start us off? My siblings and I are wearing bright colors today in honor of Marsha, who brought so much brightness to our lives. I would like to share a few reflections on behalf of my sisters and me. It would be difficult to talk about Marsha without also mentioning Grandma Schindler and Joanne. Our grandpa died when we were young, but Grandma, Joanne, and Marsha, three powerhouse Christian women, loved and supported us our entire lives. Many of our favorite childhood memories involve all three of these remarkable women. Marsha loved music, and she taught us several songs as young children, Grin Again Gang, The Watermelon Song, The Sheep Song, and Duva Nikivandu among them. As we got older, Hold On by Wilson Phillips became a fan favorite and source of much laughter, and I would sometimes call and sing the song lyrics on Joanna Marsha's answering machine. Speaking of phone calls, when Marsha picked up the phone, it was always with great enthusiasm in a sing-song, Val, Steph, Jen, we can still hear her voice in our minds. Marsha was instrumental in teaching us how to play games. She created the double el elimination Dutch Blitz tournament complete with a crown made of cards. One fun memory is playing Read My Lips. After accusing Marsha of having loud lips, we joked about putting a piece of plexiglass across the table to keep the noise from influencing our guesses. After mastering a game, we would often invent our own rules, such as changing pitch to the new improved game, Fitch. When playing Bonanza, we would decide if the game was Cutthroat or Christian Sister, where we would trade cards that would benefit others and not just ourselves. We spent many happy weeks over the years swimming at Margin Bells. One of our favorite activities we were to, were to, was to pretend we were synchronized swimmers. Looking back and having attended an actual synchronized swimming event, I now realize how silly we must have looked, but we had fun all the same. My sisters and I were fascinated with makeup, so we would often sit at the foot of the bed while Joanne and Marcia got ready in the morning. Many conversations were had with all of us piled onto someone's bed. In fact, we often laid on a bed together and said, we could sleep like this if we had to. These traditions have now been passed down to a new generation with Val's kids doing the same things. Marcia loved a bargain, and she would scope out deals for us at the annual Vera Bradley sale at the Coliseum. One year, Steph and I attended the event and served as runners while Marcia held the fort at home base as we attempted to find sets of matching luggage. Years ago, before internet spending took over, we would strategize a plan for Black Friday shopping. There was usually Team A and Team B, a divide and conquer approach to maximize early morning deals before rendezvousing for breakfast and coffee. Marcia was part of our cheering squad, traveling with us on our Bible quiz invitationals and finals. She taught me how to read a map and drove me around Indiana to visit Christian colleges. When Val was in college, she often took spur of the moment weekend trips to Joanna Marsh's house, which sometimes included contemporary Christian concerts. My sisters and I trekked down to Fort Wayne to see Stars on Ice multiple times. Marsha gave crushing hugs. 
She filled the room with joy and laughter. Marcia provided love and support. She provided friendship and a listening ear. When I think of what makes a person's life mean something, I can think of nothing greater than loving well. And our dear Marcia loved us well. I'm Jeannie Frank, and I am reading this for my very, very dear friend, Joanne. I was blessed with a wonderful family. When Marcia died, another piece of my heart died with her. Marcia was not only my beloved sister, she was my best friend and confidant, my partner in crime. We were so close that I would tell people that Marcia was my twin sister, born four years later. <laughs> she was always there for me as I was for her. She was such a fun person and made everything more exciting and fun. Marcia loved buying gifts for others, especially the hunting for a bargain, and then couldn't wait to tell you how much she had snatched it for. Her laugh was so contagious. I remember years ago being with her at a Hallmark store looking for greeting cards. We kept giggling as we read some of them and others looking for cards would start laughing with us. Marcia was truly special with a magnetic personality. I miss her so much, but know she is now completely healed and I will be reunited with her someday. I'm sure that you have uh, additional memories of, of Marcia, and we would be blessed if you would share those with us. We're going to ask uh, our two gentlemen to come and have the mics ready for you. And if you would just uh, raise your hand, uh, they will bring a microphone to you. We would ask that you would keep your uh, comments relatively short, maybe two, three, four minutes, uh, so that as many as want to can share. Hi, it is a real privilege to be here today. And um, we didn't know if we would make it because we were in Washington, D.C. But I'm Audrey Lichty Ka, and I grew up with Marcia and the Schindler family. And uh, she was a dear, dear friend for many years. <clears throat> she was often a friend when I was not as friendly back. And I will always remember how faithful she was. She was also one of the people that I sang with. We both loved to sing and play the piano. And so whenever she would come to my house or I would go to her house, we would always sing and play at the piano. She would do the treble clef and I would play the bass and then we'd harmonize. So that was a lot of fun with her. And then also she was such an encourager through the years, uh, her faith in Christ and her desire to walk with him was very evident. And so if I would be down about the latest boy who didn't like me, she was uh, always there to encourage me and, and love on me and um, turn me back to the Lord. And so I just wanted to share those thoughts with you. Thank you. Who will be next? Hi, I'm Shirley. It was a great gift from God when I met Marcia many years ago as a scared, lost freshman at Huntington College. She took me under her wing, as she did so many others, with acceptance, generosity, love, and humor. Marcia graduated before me, but for many years, a group of delightful friends would meet at Marcia and Joanne's house in Fort Wayne for uproarious hen parties amidst great food, precious fellowship, and longer burger baskets. 
<laughs> the gift of the love and friendship of God through Marcia will always be incredibly precious to me. Joanna, Marcia's family members, I pray peace, contentment, and comfort <clears throat> for you as you navigate this life change. I know even now Marcia is looking into the face of Jesus and they are talking and laughing with great joy and freedom. Thank you. I remember the Noons Wonder reunions were always a lot of fun because we knew that if we sat with Marsha and Joanne, it would just be a fun packed day. And we had so much fun uh, with laughter there. Joanne, Marsha, and I were good friends, uh, cousins, first cousins, but we were good friends. And when we watched movies, we really got into them. And we would catch each other. We, had, we were all crying. and. Then when we saw each other cry, we started laughing at each other, and and just we just had a lot of fun together. And and she and and when our families would go through a trial or something, they were always there for us with prayers. I remember Marcia and uh, my brother Greg and Wayne Bunker. They were like the Christian version of Saturday Night Live. <laughs> They were awesome. I mean, they, they just played off of each other. And um, I told my husband this morning, I said, you know, this is kind of a gritty day, but Marsha would have made it a sunshiny day. And that's what I loved about her. And Joanne, too. They, they're both very special people, and uh, we love them dearly. Thank you, Sue. Um, in 2019, we had a fire in our house, and about everything was destroyed in it. And we were at a funeral, I forget who it was for, and we were sitting across Marsh and Joanne, and I said something to them, would you help me find some things for the house, because they have really good decorating taste. Well, Marsh would have me come up to the house, and she ordered all these things for me to choose from. And she went over and above what I ever expected her to do to help me. Um, I remember at the Noon Swindler gathering, we always wanted to know what the Schindlers were bringing because the food was so good. Um, the other food was good too, but. Um, Marcia and Joanne hold a very special place in my heart and I'll always remember her laughter. Thank you. I have, some, I have something I'd like to say. Um, my name is Mark Brito. I am uh, married to Valerie, uh, Marsha's niece. And when my name was read as being part of the family, I felt honored, honored to be um, considered family by this woman. I wasn't a Christian when I met um, Marsha, but after meeting her mother and her and Joanne and the entire Schindler family, I am now, and I, I, uh, and I think a large part of that was due to her wonderful personality, her, her infectious smile and laughter, and as her crushing hugs. Uh, she, when you knew her, you, you knew, you felt her love. You felt her love, so. Thank you. I met Marsha and Joanne and their mom at a um, boutique. So then I'd see them every year at the boutique. So one year I ran into Joanne at the post office and we realized that she lived about, they lived about a mile from me. And we became fast friends. The three of us would go to those Vera Bradley sales and 
hunt down the best deal. And uh, Marcia would call me with the best deal that she just found with a coupon. And um, so we, we would get together for dinner at Bandito's and be there for like two hours as we discussed the world situation in our lives. And they were both very, very supportive of me and the things that I would go through. I miss her dearly, as I know Joanne does. And Joanne and I keep getting together and consoling each other. Thank you. We have uh, one tribute from someone who's unable to be here. Uh, this tribute comes from California, and uh, we're going to show that one on the screen. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I love saying Marsha's name for over 55 years. Hi, I'm June Bivens. I'm one of Marsha's lifelong friends. Marsha and I were actually childhood friends but it wasn't until the sixth grade when we really became kindred souls. And I remember that day like it was yesterday. We had talked our teacher, Mrs. Briggs, into teaching us how to knit. And um, whatever Marsha loved, Marsha loved with great passion. And knitting became her new passion. And she committed to making slippers for everyone in her entire family. So Mrs. Briggs got us got a pattern for us and told us now you're going to adjust the pattern slightly um, based on each person's shoe size or foot size. So anyway, Marsha went home and she started knitting these slippers for her brother Tom, um, but she really didn't know when to stop. So the next day when she brought the slippers into the school for Mrs. Briggs to look at how much she knitted, Mrs. Briggs goes, oh my we might have to turn these slippers into a scarf. And at that point, I just loved her enthusiasm. And um, we just were lifelong friends from that moment on. I loved to go over to the Schindlers to play when I was a child. Marsha had the coolest toys. She had a little kittle collection that um, was really over the moon. She kept every little comb, every little accessory in a neat little box. We would laugh about Babe Biddle 50 years later as, um, as I always wanted to play with her. Marsh had her put away in a neat little box and I imagine she's still in that box today. As a teenager, we would go over, I would go over and play games with, um, with she and Ellie and um, Joanne sometimes. And um, Marsha was the fastest blitz player there was and she won the $10,000 pyramid game every time I so wanted to beat her, but honestly, it would be next to impossible. When we would get thirsty, the Schindlers kept a pitcher of cold water in their refrigerator. And I don't know why, but I had never seen that before. And um, I have to say, I still love drinking cold, cold water because of that. <laughs> anyway, her dad worked at, um, her dad Max worked at Micromatic or Micro Precision, I can't remember the name. And somehow that was before Sam's and Costco and all of that, but he was able to buy these big boxes of packages of M&Ms and they kept them on the, they kept them above the refrigerator and Marsh and I would sneak over there and, um, and get a package and oh my gosh, we loved it. And to this day, M&Ms are still my very favorite candy. Going over for dinner was an unbelievable experience. Ellie was a fabulous cook and she could whip up things in that small kitchen that would just make your, um, just make you smile. It was a haven of peace. I never heard the Schindler's fight or raise their voices. They only encouraged one another and me or whoever else was in their home. I also remember how fancy I thought the Schindler's were and how lucky Johan and Ellie were to work at CTS. I loved hearing all their stories and I wanted to join them. But for some reason, neither Marsha nor I ever worked there. When my dad um, died so unexpectedly, unexpectedly, it was Max who would take Marsha and I out for dinner. You know, he was so instrumental in uh, my teenage years. 
Oh my God, goodness, we loved going to the Dutch Mill in Bluffton or to Coppice Corner in Monroe. Now, Marsha got her license before most of us, and so she drove us around Bern. We were always looking for who was out and about and who we could talk to. If we really couldn't find anyone, then we would sing at the top of our lungs while we were driving around. You know, Marsha never met a stranger and she really loved everyone. She always saw the best in them. And this was, I really believe this was instilled way deep down in her soul and proven out in many life friendships. But one of my favorite stories was in French class. Mrs. Newtswander had us sit according to our grades. Kevin Lehman always got the number one seat. But if Marsha and I got the same grade, we still weren't allowed to sit together. She always put people between us until one day, utterly exasperated, she said, I can't separate you two. You are just friendly with everyone. <laughs> Over the years, our friendship grew, though we didn't live near each other. The cell phone was our friend and really one of the greatest inventions. I don't know how Marsh did it, but she always found time for me. We would talk, you know, sometimes for hours on my long, long drives from, um, long drives to and from customer, meet, customer meetings all over Northern California and Nevada. We talked about everything, anything, and sometimes really nothing. <laughs> she was wise beyond her years and her perspective on what was happening was inspired. She never held out, she never held back on pointing out, you know, what I might be missing or not really seeing in, in this situation. I honestly, I can't stand it. I still wish I could call her today. Oh, we would laugh and we would cry and we would share all of our favorite things. The last couple of years of Marsha's life were really tough. Joanne, you were the best sister, best friend she could have ever had. We spent a lot of time talking about heaven, about dying, and what really matters. And I can say unequivocally, she knew that she was loved by God and she loved him right back. She knew she was loved by her family and she loved them right back as well as all her friends. Really, honestly, she loved every single person that she ever encountered. Marsha had a great life. I can only imagine her now. She dreamed of having a new body with no pain and was looking forward to singing with the other angels in heaven. Marsh, you made such a great impact on my life and I love you. Thanks. Every day they pass me by, I can see it in their eyes. Empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. On they go through private pain, living fear to fear. Laughter hides their silent cries, only Jesus hears. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, He's the open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When will we realize people need the Lord? We are called to take his light 
to a world where wrong seems right. What could be so great a cost for sharing life with one who's lost? Through his love our hearts can feel all the grief they bear. They must hear the words of life only we can share. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, He's the open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When will we realize that we must give our lives for people need the Lord. People need the Lord. Morning, everybody. You're very far away. Um, thank you all so much for being here and for sharing uh, your memories of Marsha. It's been a joy to hear. So Marsha chose the theme and the title of this memorial service uh, this morning, A Celebration of a Life Well Lived. And as you can see from the bright colors uh, our family has decided to wear in her honor, we agree. Marsha was a bright presence in all of our lives. And the program is right when it calls her a beloved daughter, sister, aunt, great aunt and friend. Marsha was a caring, fun person to be around. She had an infectious laugh, a beautiful singing voice, and a buoyant spirit. She loved a good story, whether telling or hearing, and you couldn't help but be carried along by her enthusiasm. Marsha loved life, and that love of life spilled over wherever she went and whoever she was with. One thing that many of us know about Marsha is that she was very generous. She loved to give. Whether it was a word of advice, a helping hand, or a thoughtful gift, Marsha loved to bless other people. At my high school graduation party, when I was wavering about what I should do for college, Marsha gave me advice in song form, singing, climb every mountain from the sound of music. <laughs> and thanks to her encouragement, I did climb that mountain. When I was hired for my first job out of, out of college, I knew that the car I was driving wouldn't make it to my, to my destination but I was having trouble getting a car loan because I needed the car to get to the job, but the bank wanted me to have the job before they'd give me a loan. Well, Marcia got wind of this, and she offered me a no-interest car loan better than any bank would have done. At first, I refused, telling her that I'd been praying for God to provide for me, and I was gonna wait it out with the bank. And Marcia, who was never one to keep her mouth quiet when she knew that what she had to say would make a difference, told me, who says I'm not God's answer to your prayer? Well, Marcia's car loan ended up being a great blessing to me as I was finding my footing in life. And when my wife, Abby, was leading the children's ministry at our church on a shoestring budget, a strange package arrived on our doorstep one day, an out-of-nowhere gift from Marcia and Joanne with some of the things that Abby had wanted for the ministry. Marcia was very generous. And it's in, it's in that spirit of generosity that Marcia, who planned much of the service this morning, marked me down to share with you the source of her life well-lived. While it's possible to just be a kind or a generous person or just to love life, in Marsha's case, there was more to it than that. To help talk about Marsha's life well lived, I'm going to read a very brief story that Jesus told. Here it is. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy that field. That's it. That's the story. It's just one verse. 
Jesus tells this brief story to show us what it's like to discover the kingdom of heaven. Now, when we think of heaven, we often think of some ethereal place far off with clouds and harps, far removed from our everyday lives here on earth. But when Jesus spoke about the kingdom of heaven, he was talking about the power and presence of God breaking in here on earth now, a new reality that everyone was invited into. The Gospel of Mark tells us that Jesus' ministry was to proclaim, the time promised by God has come at last. The kingdom of God is here. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Jesus here uses the word gospel or good news. Jesus' announcement was more like a news broadcast than, we think, than what we think of as a church sermon. Jesus wasn't selling a program or promoting a religion. He was inviting us into the way that things really are, a reality that, her, that had arrived in who he, he, in who he is. So in the story, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to to get enough money to buy the field. So someone's walking along in a field and they discover this new and life-changing reality, a treasure beyond their wildest imagination buried just below the surface of what they thought was an ordinary field. I want you to imagine that something like this happened to you. Maybe you're walking through a store and you find an incredible bargain, something selling for far less than it's worth. Or if you're a collector, the very item that you've been hunting down for years, that's what you find. What would you do? For those of us who knew Marsha, we don't have to imagine too hard. Marsha had an eye for quality. A collector herself, Marsha knew what what the good stuff was. And Marsha also knew what the good stuff was worth, which is why she loved to discover a bargain, kind of a recurring theme, to find something of quality priced far below its value. She was a master at finding value where others might have missed it. Jesus says that finding the kingdom of heaven is a lot like that. We've stumbled into something, the value of which we recognize to be far greater than the asking price. When we find a fortune changer like that, of course it's worth it to buy it, no matter what the cost is. It's a simple question of economics. In this case, in finding the kingdom, the cost is high. It requires everything, everything we are, everything we have. The prospect of paying that high a price would put a damper on the bargain if the prize wasn't worth it. Yet as we see in the story, the man liquidates all his assets in his excitement. He's excited to do it. Although the cost is high, he does not see the proposition as a loss in his ledger, but as a tremendous gain. He knows there is much more treasure in the field than there ever was in his bank account. And that's what it's like to discover the life that God offers. And that was, that was Marcia's experience. Marcia came to believe in Jesus from a young age in this very church. And throughout her life, throughout the ups and downs and health struggles, she continued to trust and follow him until her very last breath on earth. She found the treasure in the field, and she spent all her life for it. But as we who know Marcia can attest, this wasn't burdensome to her. The value of what she found was so great that it was the source of her joy and abundant life. It was what made hers a life well lived. The Apostle Paul, one of Jesus' early followers, described a similar experience. He had once persecuted followers of Jesus, and he talks about the things that used to give his life meaning, that he was born in the right family, that he was in the right profession, that he believed the right things, that he lived the right way. But Paul had an encounter with Jesus, and he was never the same afterward. He writes, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Jesus has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all garbage so that I could gain Christ. The treasure in the field cost Paul everything, and it was a bargain. When we talk about heaven and eternal life, we often present it in terms of the afterlife. At least, if this life isn't any good, I'll go to heaven when I die, and then, at that point, I will be happy. And make no mistake, we, believe, we do believe in life after death. We believe that Marcia is no longer sick, is no longer in pain, and is in the presence of the Jesus she loves so much here on earth. Paul tells us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We believe this. Yet eternal life doesn't start when we die. And theolo- as theologian and philosopher Dallas Willard used to say, eternity is already in session. We're not stuck on hold or in a waiting room wondering when we'll be called back and the real thing can get on with it. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it to the full. When we look at Marcia's life, that's what we see. We see a full life, a life well lived. We don't see someone who is worried about trying to earn God's approval. Rather, we see someone who is so captured by the mercy and love of God 
and who lived as a beloved child of God. C.S. Lewis once wrote, aim at heaven and you will get the earth thrown in. Marcia lived joyfully in the awareness that she was receiving more than she was giving. By orienting her life toward Jesus and his kingdom, she got the good life thrown in. When you find the treasure of greater value, everything spent in pursuit of that treasure is a bargain. So Marcia found the treasure in the field, but Marcia didn't want to hoard that treasure for herself. Rather, she wished to share it with her friends and family. So let me ask you a question this morning. Have you found the treasure in the field? Have you found the new life that Jesus offers, the new way of living? Admittedly, we live in, a t- in times when we haven't always seen uh, Jesus' followers at their best. So maybe you feel like you've seen the treasure, but it's all fool's gold. Or maybe you've seen the treasure, but you think the cost is too high. You're afraid that you might give more than you get. Let me encourage you this morning. The real Jesus is sweeter than you imagine, and the life he offers is an endless abundance. It's true that as Jesus admitted, in this life you'll have trouble. But we have Jesus' accompanying promise, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And it's also true that in our, that in our selling everything to buy the field, God is not asking us to do anything that he hasn't already done himself. Immediately after the story of the treasure in the field, Jesus tells another one-verse story. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Now, at first glance, this sounds an awful lot like the story that we've already heard, the story of the treasure in the field. But notice the difference. In the first story, the kingdom of heaven is the treasure in the field. In the second story, the kingdom of heaven is the merchant. So in the first story, we find the kingdom of heaven and we give our lives to get it. In the second story, the kingdom of heaven finds us and the kingdom gives everything to get us. And we know just how much Jesus paid for us. We've rebelled against God and the price to redeem us from that rebellion was to bring, and to bring us back into relationship with God was his life. Jesus laid down his innocent life on the cross to do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves to save us. But he didn't do it out of obligation or duty. Rather, much like the man or the merchant in Jesus' stories, the Bible says that he did it for the joy set before him. Because to him, we are pearls of great value. Jesus' offer of life isn't just for the quote-unquote good people. In her notes, Marcia was clear that she wanted everyone to know that she was a sinner just like everyone else. And Paul tells us that God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to clean up our act, which is impossible for us to do anyway. He expressed his love in his death while we were still sinners. So that's the gift on offer this morning. Life, abundant life, that starts today and lasts through eternity. That's the parting gift that when Marcia thought of her friends and family gathering to celebrate, she wanted to share with you. And claiming it is easy, if costly. Paul tells us that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's it. Confess and believe. Confess. Agree that Jesus is Lord, the one in charge, that as the Bible says, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. And also believe that God raised him from the dead, that he is still alive and is able to intercede on our behalf today. Confessing and believing is something you can do today, right now in this service, and it's something that will change your life. I want to close briefly with that last part, believing that God raised Jesus from the dead, because that's the source of our hope. Truly, while we want to celebrate Marcia's life well lived, we also recognize that there's a hole here on earth. There's one less seat at the dinner table, One less hand dealt in the cards, one less laugh at the stories we tell, one less voice singing Christmas carols. And it's right to mourn this loss. We miss Marcia terribly. But as as believers in Jesus, we do not mourn as those who have no hope. And the reason is that, as the Bible tells us, Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. In other words, Jesus is the first crop out of the ground, like our daffodils that always poke their heads out in February, signaling that spring is on its way. And Jesus, the first fruits of the resurrection, guarantees the rest of the harvest is coming. 
Just as he was raised from the dead, so we believe that those who have fallen asleep, like Marsha, like the members of her family who have preceded her in death, will be raised. I've talked about Marsha in the past tense this morning, like she's gone. But we believe that Marsha is more alive today than she ever was before. Marsha's life was well lived, and she's still living it in the presence of Jesus today. May we all one day join her. Amen.
could only see me In just a few moments, we're going to be dismissed, <clears throat> and uh, you are all invited to join the family in a, a meal. We would really encourage you to stay and be a part of that because it's a time when you can continue to share and fellowship with them in Marsha's memory. We're going to pray together, and uh, then we're going to dismiss. We're going to ask the family to uh, to lead us out if you'd remain seated until they are uh, about to exit the, the sanctuary. And then if you would uh, join them in the fellowship area, um, we'll enjoy a great meal that the ladies have prepared for us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for that promise of eternal life that you have given to us for your amazing plan of salvation, for the fact that you loved us so much that you sent your only Son to pay the penalty for our sins, that we might receive his righteousness and that we might receive eternal life. Lord, we thank you for Marcia's faith, her faith that was strong to the end, her faith that was an example to each one of us. And Lord, we pray that as we remember her life, that it might motivate us and strengthen us and that we might be the people that you have created us to be. Lord, I pray for continued strength, continued comfort, and continued direction for each member of the family. And Lord, we thank you for the relationships and the family that they are. May you continue to bless them. And now, Lord, we pray that you might watch over us as we continue to share, as we continue to remember, and as we continue to honor you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now if the family would make their way to the uh, gymnasium, uh, the meal is prepared there. And uh, we very much would encourage you to join, to join us. Thank you, and you are dismissed.